Last time we talked about Steam input, we talked about basically every other control on a controller. Some nifty control settings as well as multi-button toggling, but I'm here to tell you about how to add more control to your controllers. Worried that your controller doesn't have enough buttons to support all of your binds on your PC games? Worry not, because that's what this video is here for. Action layers, mode shifting has you covered, and this is all possible on the Steam Deck. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join my Discord server. Next time we'll cover activators and what they are. Yeah, I did say that, but I also think that action layers and action sets are more important to cover. Not to mention activators are actually really, really hard, so I'll get into that later. So let's begin then. Mode shifting allows you to change the function of the controls upon holding down a button. In this example, the right trackpad functions as a mouse input. But if you hold the left grip button, it shifts to a different mode. The style of input of this new mode shifted input can be basically anything you have access to. In this case, let's turn this into yet another radial menu. As you can see here, I can move a mouse around just fine normally. But if you hold down the left grip button, it changes to a radial menu. You're not limited to just mode shifting your trackpads. You can mode shift your analog sticks, your face buttons, your other trackpads. As of the writing of this video, the only buttons you can't really mode shift are your triggers, your shoulder buttons, and your grip buttons. That's because these buttons are used to trigger mode shifts. You can have the trigger soft and full pulls, the bumpers, the grip buttons, trackpad clicks, joystick clicks, an individual face button, start and select buttons, all of the buttons I just listed are buttons that can be used as your mode shift triggers, or the button that you hold down to enable the mode shift. Next, we're here to talk about action layers. Action layers are, well, basically just layers that you layer over top of your existing controls. When you apply an action layer onto a set of controls, none of the existing controls change except for what you changed in this action layer. So how do you make use of an action layer? Well, I'll tell you. After creating your new action layer, what you do is you go to configure a button. You'll notice that there's a new option right next to the show keyboard option. Those are your various controls for your action layers and action sets. You can hold, apply, or remove an action layer. Select your action layer, and you're all set. How useful these features are really depends on how creative you are with your control schemes. The most creative thing I've done with these action layers is create a mested radial menu. Essentially, I've created a radial menu inside of a touch menu. The two touch menu options lead to two different radial menus. I've also made it so that when you select the inner radial menu option, it takes you back to the touch menu after executing that option. I'm going to be honest with you, this requires a lot of advanced understanding of Steam input and some features I haven't yet told you about. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was action sets. Unlike action layers, action sets totally replace your controls with a totally different control scheme. In theory, you could create different control sets for, say, being on foot and being in a vehicle. And with the little option I mentioned earlier, you can have a button change your action set immediately. The issue is that in games that don't support the Steam Input API naturally, action sets must be manually toggled on and off. For example, if you wanted to go from an on-foot control scheme to a driving control scheme, you would have to manually assign a button to do that. There is a remedy for this though. If a game supports the Steam Input API, they can make use of this. For example, No Man's Sky makes use of the Steam Input API. 
As such, the game knows when to switch action layers, more specifically when you enter and leave your spaceship, meaning it's practical to set separate controls for on foot as well as in a spaceship. Another game, or rather game series that has this level of support is American and Euro Truck Simulators. I'm not really a stickler for truck simulator games or, you know, farming simulator, etc, etc, but the developers do put in good work. They have also confirmed that they're going to put in even more work to support the Steam Deck, including using the Steam Deck's version of Steam Input, which I believe should be mostly the same except for more controls. More on that later. So that's my thought on action sets. One more thing I would like to talk about before I dismiss you guys is Steam Chords. Steam Chords are more or less built-in hotkeys. And all of this is built into Steam itself. There's no need to configure it, no need to enable it. It's just always there. You hold down your Xbox or your Steam or your PlayStation button and you press one of these buttons to do actions. For example, on a Steam controller, you hold the Steam button and you press Y and you turn off the controller. Or you can hold down the Steam button and analog stick up and down to change the volume. Or, get this, take a screenshot hold the Steam button down and then press right bumper, or R1. Your Steam cord configurations can be customized to your liking. I would just keep all of this the way it is. I will say we are pretty close to the finish line when it comes to Steam input, but it's only about to get even tougher with the next part. The next part will feature actuators. Stay tuned for part 5.